We'll look in the letter of Ephesians and spend, time, spend our time just in Ephesians chapter 1. And I want us to notice four blessings that Christians have. Four blessings for those who are in Christ this morning. I want to thank John for reading our scripture this morning. I actually made the mistake and, and left off two verses. So that's not your fault, that's my fault, but we're going to be looking at John, or Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14 this morning, and we're going to be looking for four blessings for those who are in Christ. So let's go ahead and read through our text again, and then we're going to work through this and find out what those four blessings are. Verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquired possession of it to the praise of his glory. Wow. There is a lot here in this passage, but we're going to be looking for four blessings that Christians have, four blessings for those who are in Christ. The first blessing that we're going to see this morning is that those who are in Christ are predestined for adoption as sons into Christ. Read with me start verses three through six again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. The distinction in these passages that helps us find out what the blessings are, I want you to notice these phrases, in love, in him, in him, and in him. These three, the four statements, they're all similar to each other. They're, they're, a, they're a pattern. And these, this pattern helps indicate what are going to be the blessings we're looking at this morning. The first one we find here in verse, verse four, in love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. Christians have been adopted into Christ. When we become Christians, we are adopted into the family of God. Christianity, our lives as Christians, we become children of God through this spiritual adoption into Christ. But we also notice in, in verse 5, it says that in love he predestined us to adoption or for adoption to himself. God had a plan from the very beginning of the foundation of the world, that this is how he was going to help all of us become his children. This was his plan from the very beginning, that we would be predestined to become children of his. So what does he mean when he says that God chose before the foundation of the world? What, how do we harmonize this? Because there are many people in the world who want to talk to us about this concept of predestination. Now, first and foremost, I want to make it very clear. Predestination. This is a Bible concept. It is not one of those words we should hear and we should, oh, predestination, we don't believe in that. Yes, we do, because we believe in what the Bible says, and the Bible talks about predestination. However, there is a lot of false doctrine surrounding this term predestination. So how do we correctly and identify and understand what we're talking about, about predestination? Or predestination here because after all again verse 5 does say that in love he predestined us for this adoption to himself for this adoption to become children of Jesus Christ how do we understand this better we're not talking about a predestination of 
He picked you. He picked you. He picked you. He didn't pick you over there, but he, but he, he didn't pick you, but he picked, he picked uh, certain people in this world. We're not talking about a predestination where he said, okay, Bob, Steve, Jill, and Jennifer, they're the ones who are predestined to be his children. What he did predestine was a kind of person. Now, make sure you hear the distinction. We're not talking about specific people. Again, we're not talking about Jill, Jennifer, Frank, and Tim. We're talking about the kind of person that God has predestined. God chose the kind of person who would get to be one of his children before he created the world. When we understand that, that logically brings us to a question. What kind of person did he choose? Read again with me verse 3, and we'll find the answer in verse 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. God did predestine us for adoption as sons to himself. What did he predestine? He predestined the kind of person who was going to be able to become children of his. What is this kind of person? He predestined the people who get to be his children, people who would choose to be holy and blameless before him. We are talking about people who would come out of themselves and decide, I'm going to live a life that God says is good. I want to live a life that God says is holy. I want to live a life that God says is blameless. I want to be someone who is holy and blameless in the eyes of God. That is the kind of person that God predestined. He predestined the kind of person, one who would willingly submit themselves to living a life that is holy and blameless before him. Again, we're, we're noticing he did not predestine a specific person as many people or, or as people who want to teach false doctrine would say that if you are a child of God, it's because you are one of the chosen. He predestined the kind of person who gets to be a child of his. This is important because with the false doctrine out there, that says, again, some people are going to heaven and some people are not. And the only way you know if you're one of the few is if you find out if you're one of the people who have been chosen. And the Bible does not teach this. The Bible does not teach, again, that Jill, Jennifer, Tim, and Steve are the ones who are going to heaven. He predestined the kind of person. Now, if these four people want to be this kind of person that God predestined, who gets to be a child of his, then yes, they are going to heaven. They are predestined. They are children of God. They are predestined, are predestined for this adoption. But we need to understand this importance that God predestined, he predetermined before the foundation of the world, the kind of person who is going to get to go to heaven. Not a specific person, but the kind of person. We also want to ask, what were these people chosen for? Again, they were chosen for the adoption of sons through Jesus Christ. These are the ones who are chosen to be adopted into the family of God. And this was God's plan before the foundation of the world. So what is the first blessing for those who are in Christ? They are predestined to be children of God through adoption to himself. When we become Christians, we get to partake in this adoption. When we become God's children, we are adopted into Christ as Christians. All right, well, what's the second blessing in Christ that we're going to look at this morning? Jump down with me to verse 7. Verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. So what is the second blessing that Christians have, that those in Christ have? We have redemption through his blood. Again, verse 7 says, in him, that's the distinguishing mark we're looking at to see the, uh, the four blessings. In him, we have redemption through his blood. Well, what is this redemption through his blood? It is the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. What is grace? Grace is favor. And when we're talking about favor, especially when we're talking about God's grace, God's favor, we're talking about favor that we don't deserve. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, as Romans 3.23 tells us. And we are told in Romans 6.23 that we deserve to die because of that. We have separated ourselves from God. We have transgressed God's law, and we have separated ourselves from Him. And with God's grace, 
he throws that away. With God's grace, when we respond to the gift that he has given to us, he shows us unmerited favor, favor that we don't deserve. We have hurt God. We have hurt our relationship with him. And yet, he's going to show us grace. I'm going to be favorable to you, even though you have broken broken our relationship. But through redemption, through the blood of Jesus, God shows us grace by buying us back. In him, we have redemption. We are bought back through his blood, through the forgiveness of our sins, through the forgiveness of our trespasses. And these things are according to the riches of God's grace. We are also told here in these passages that the riches of his grace, he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, and that he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ. What is this mystery that Paul is referring to here? It is the plan for the fullness of time. It is God's mystery that he was going to unite all people, that everyone, anyone and everyone can become a child of his. You see, in the Old Testament, the Jews believed that they were the only ones who were going to be God's children. Because God made a covenant with them specifically, and they were God's people, and he was their God. And unfortunately, as we read about their history, we see they did not live as God's children. But God had a plan to unite all people, not the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. People who are not Jews, anyone and everyone, can become children of God's. And this was God's plan all along. Later on in the letter of Ephesians, Paul will reveal to the Ephesians that the, this mystery was that the Gentiles are also fellow heirs in Christ. And this is the mystery of God's will. And this is the plan that he had from the very beginning to unite all people to him, the things that are on heaven and the things that are on earth. This has always been God's plan to reu reunite all things back to himself. And he did this according to his purpose, and he did it in all wisdom and insight. People want to ask questions. Well, didn't God know that when he created mankind, that mankind was going to sin? Yes, he did. We are told that. God knew that. That mankind was going to separate themselves from him. And yet, he still had a plan anyway of how he was going to reunite mankind to himself. And again, we're not just talking about the Jews. We're talking about all of mankind. God had a plan before the foundation of the world of how he was going to reunite all people back together. And he's going to do that through adoption. Adoption of a certain kind of person who would be willing to humble themselves to be holy and blameless before himself. And how is this accomplished? It is accomplished through redemption. Through this adoption, we have redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ, and God forgives our sins. And that is a blessing, that we are able to be brought back to God, that he buys us back. Even though we have separated ourselves from him, he paid the price for our separation through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. We are redeemed. Redeemed means to be bought back, and we are bought back through the price of Jesus' blood. That is a blessing from the Lord, that he would give up his only son to buy us back. His son, Jesus, didn't sin against him. His son is a part of him, and it was reigning with him in heaven. And yet he sent his son to go die on the cross for our sins so that he could buy us back from our transgressions. What a blessing from the Lord for those who are in Christ. What is the next blessing that we're going to look at this morning? Jump down with me to verse 11. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. The third blessing that those in Christ have is that they have an inheritance. This inheritance, again, was predestined according to his purpose, who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Again, we've been talking about how God has had a plan from the beginning of time. He knew mankind was going to separate themselves from him, but he had a plan of how he was going to bring them back, how he was going to make them children of his. But we need to understand something, too. When we become children of God, we are part of his family. We are his children. We have full status of being in the family of God. And because of that, we get to have the inheritance that God has left for us. This inheritance is eternal life. Again, turn with me to Romans chapter 6. I want us to see for our own eyes what this specific inheritance is. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 tells us that the wages of sin is death, 
but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This inheritance that we're reading about here in Ephesians, if you want to turn back there with me, is eternal life. As God's children, we get the inheritance of eternal life, getting to dwell with him in heaven forever, for eternity. Verse 11, again, we notice that this inheritance, God wants us to have this. When someone is writing a will, again, they're writing their will, then knowing that when they die, they're going to pass off their things or their items to whoever they want them to go. They are giving their items to someone, to something. And in a very real way, God is giving us eternal life. He is giving us our inheritance of getting to dwell with him forever, for in eternity. And this is his will. It is according to his purpose that we should be able to dwell with him. God wants this for us, that we can dwell with him. When those in Christ receive the inheritance, this is to the praise of God's glory, because his will is being accomplished. God wants us to be able to obtain an inheritance. Christians, those who are in Christ, have an inheritance, their inheritance being eternal life with God. And what is the last blessing that we're going to look at this morning? Jump down with me to verse 13. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. When those who are in Christ become God's children, they are sealed with the Holy Spirit. What does this mean? How do we understand this better? Well, let's read through it again. Let's break it down. In him, you were, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and believed in him, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. So there's an indication here that when someone becomes a child of God, when they are adopted into Christ, again, they are redeemed, they've been bought back, they have this inheritance, but they are also sealed with the Holy Spirit. When did this happen? This happened when they heard the word of truth, when they heard the good news, the gospel of their salvation, and they believed in him, they were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. When we become Christians, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. What is a seal? A seal, have you ever seen a seal where someone, maybe in a movie or in, in ancient times, they'll have a letter and you may have a, an, em, uh, an emperor or a king and they take the royal ring and they, they stamp that letter with that ring. They put their seal upon that letter. What are they doing? They are making known this letter is approved by them. They are putting their mark upon that letter to show, to confirm that this letter is from them. And in the same way, God is putting his seal upon us. Well, what is that seal? It is the Holy Spirit within us. The Holy Spirit seals us with the promised Holy Spirit. When God is sealing us with the Holy Spirit, he is, prov- he is showing his, his approval. He is confirming that we belong to him. This person is now, when they've become a child of God, when they've been adopted into Christ, they've been bought back, they've received this inheritance, they've received the seal of the Holy Spirit They are being approved. This is my son. They are a child of God in the eyes of God. God is giving them their seal. He is saying, this is my child here. Verse 14 tells us that the Holy Spirit is is our guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. In other words, the Holy Spirit is the one who communicates to us, is the reason we can have confidence that we are going to get our inheritance when it is time. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance. And so we see four blessings that, for those who are in Christ this morning. Again, that they are predestined to adoption into Christ. That they have redemption, the forgiveness of their sins. They have the inheritance of eternal life, and they are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And so in application this morning, we, we want to notice that these blessings are for those in Christ. They are chosen to be adopted into God's family. Again, we want to remind ourselves that the kind of person is what is predestined to to receive this adoption, the kind of person. If you're not a Christian this morning, do you want to be this kind of person who would become a child of God, who would live a life that is holy and blameless before God? If you want to be a Christian this morning, you need to be that kind of person. We're not talking about someone where God is going to say, you know what, I like you, I'm just going to pick you to go to heaven because for no reason. We are talking about someone who is submitting themselves to God's design, to God's will, who will live a life that is pleasing to God. 
When these people are adopted into Christ, they are bought back to the blood of Jesus. This person is bought back to be a child of God. You can call God your father, and you are his child. Which, by the way, that's why we can call each other brothers and sisters. For all, those of us who are Christians, you, you're a child of God, I'm a child of God. We are now family in Christ. I am your brother in Christ. You are my sister in Christ. Because we are all children of Christ. We've been bought back, we've been adopted into God's family. And we both have the same inheritance. The inheritance of eternal life. Becoming a child of God brings us full status of God. We have access to, to God and, and His resources, and He is granting the inheritance of eternal life to all of us, that we can have full access to being with Him in heaven. And how do we know that we're a child of God? How do we know that we have the promise, that we, we have the guarantee of our inheritance because we're being sealed by the Holy Spirit? There's much more we could talk about the sealing of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the Holy Spirit being upon us, being upon us and changing us, submitting ourselves to God's word, studying it, letting it change us to be, to act how God would have us be. Again, we talked about someone who is predestined to become a child of God as someone who would be the kind of person that God wants to be his children. The kind of people God wants us to be, we find the answers heal, or here. And we're letting the Holy Spirit seal us. When we study God's word, we learn how to be like Jesus. We follow in his steps. We let the Holy Spirit come upon us and change our spirit to conform to the image of Christ. This is how we are sealed with the Holy Spirit, and it is the guarantee of our inheritance. If we will walk according to the Bible, follow after the image of Christ, follow in his steps, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit, and it is our guarantee that we are in Christ. But again, we want to make this very clear distinction. These blessings, eternal life, being called a child of God, this is only for those who are in Christ. This is only for those who are in Christ. Are you in Christ this morning? If you are not in Christ, you do not have these blessings. You do not have the blessing of being able to be called a child of God. You do not have the blessing of being bought back through the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus has not saved you if you are not in Christ. You do not have this inheritance of eternal life if you have not become a child of God. You are not in Christ without that. And you are not being sealed with the Holy Spirit unless you are in Christ. If you want these blessings, you need to be in Christ or else you do not have these blessings. Do you want these blessings? And you need to obey the gospel of Christ. You need to believe that Jesus is the Christ. You need to repent of your sins. And when we're talking about repenting, we're talking about a complete change in your life. You're living this way, you're going to turn around and walk the other way. Live a completely different life, a complete 180 in your life. You need to confess Jesus Christ as your Lord. He is the one who is in charge, who gets to determine how you are going to live your life because he is Lord, he is my king, and it is to him that I give my allegiance. And we need to be baptized into his name. And one last thing I want us to look at this morning as we, we consider those who are in Christ, how they are to live their lives, if you wanted to become one, uh, become a child of God yourself. Matthew chapter 16, if you would turn with me there. Matthew chapter 16. And then we'll, be, we'll finish up this morning. In Matthew chapter 16, starting in verse 24, this is what Jesus said if you're going to be his disciple. If you're going to be a child of God, Jesus is speaking to you right now through this passage. Matthew 16, verse 24. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the, man, for the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and he, then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you that there are those some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. But did you see what Jesus said? If you're going to be a disciple of his, if you are going to be a son of God, a child of God, Jesus said you need to deny yourself, take up your cross, and to follow him. If you want to have these blessings that we've been talking about this morning, that we've been looking at through Ephesians 1, you need to become a Christian. You need to obey the gospel. Again, you need to believe that Jesus is the Christ. You need to repent of your sins to change your life. Confess Christ as your Lord. and be baptized into his name. And this is how you are to live. Denying yourself, taking up your cross, and following Jesus for the rest of your days. If you want to become a child of God this morning, 
If you want to partake and have these blessings from God, if you want to be in Christ this morning, why don't you come as we stand and sing the selected song?